Hello everybody and I am pleased to present uh, the new video on liver pathology on demands of the uh, students as you wanted uh, videos organ based, organ system based. So this is a liver pathology uh, video. What I have done in this case is to take images from the museum specimens of various medical colleges and then process it for better appreciation with the picture manager. So if this is the original image in the museum jars of the uh, institute, then after processing the image becomes like this and uh, I am sure you will appreciate that uh, such images are there. I have in person visited at least 30 to 40 medical college museums for the purpose of examinations UG and PG and uh, the important lesions, the uh, museum specimens are almost showing similar features, gross features. The references for my presentation are the standard uh, textbooks of pathology which the students use. Now let us take this first image. Uh, this is the slice of the liver and shows the cut surface as well as this is showing the capsular surface. Now identify the lesion giving reasons and mention the etiology or the causes of this particular change. Now this is a slice of liver. Organ is enlarged and pale yellow in color on cut surface as well as on the capsular surface. The capsule appears the tense and glistening. The surface is greasy on cutting, but you need not mention this in the museum specimen. But if asked, you should be able to tell. In addition, the important feature is there is a rounding of the borders because of the accumulation of cytoplasmic accumulation of the fat. So rounding of the border, pale yellow color, enlarged organ, the diagnosis is fatty change of liver or steatosis. Steatosis means fatty change. Steatosis is further used as microvesicular steatosis or macrovesicular steatosis. Meaning thereby, if the parenchymal cells of the hepatocyte show large single vacuole, it is macro steatosis. And microvesicular steatosis is uh, cytoplasm show multiple small uh, vacuoles in the cytoplasm of the hepatocytes. Now the causes of fatty change. You can divide them in two groups. Conditions which are associated with excess fat in the body and conditions in which there is a liver cell damage leading to accumulation of the fat. The first group includes obesity, diabetes mellitus and metabolic syndrome. Now this metabolic syndrome is increasingly seen in younger population students who are or the population people who are young and very obese. They do have dyslipidemia, triglyceride levels are very high and HD or high density lipids are very low. They have also insulin resistance and abdominal girth is more. So metabolic syndrome condition you must know. Then there may be liver cell damage because of the chronic alcoholism as everybody knows which is the most common cause. Also the starvation and pro protein caloric malnutrition or marasmus uh, and related conditions may also show fatty change of the liver.
Uh, you will appreciate that this is again a slice of liver showing similar features, pale yellow color and the glistening capsule. So this is also a fatty change and the question is important and mention the special stain for the confirmation of this particular change. So diagnosis fatty change or steatosis of liver. You must remember that intracytoplasmic fat is dissolved during the histopathological processing of the paraffin block making and sectioning. The fat gets dissolved in solvents used in this process which include alcohol, xylene, acetone. So the on sectioning the fat accumulated in the parenchyma appears as a vacuole. Uh, so in order to demonstrate the fat you have to do the frozen section with the instrument called as cryostat which you must have seen in the department. So you take a cryostat uh, section of the liver and then stain with special stains like Sudan 3 which gives orange color to the fatty vacuoles. You may use another stain called as Sudan black which gives black color to the fatty vacuoles and oil red O gives you the red color. So this is important uh, MCQ question and uh, in particular fatty change can be asked as a short answer question. Let us go to the next one. Yes, this is the slice of the liver and in contrast to the previous you see the prominent vascular radicals or vascular channels prominent on the cut surface. So you have to identify and give the reasons about this particular thing. The cut surface has got a different appearance also. So the slice of the liver on cut surface prominent vascular channel and the capsule here is also tense and glistening. Then there are areas which are blackish brown and they are predominantly are around these dilated vascular channels and these are big centrilobular areas or around the central vein of the lobule of the hepatocytes and this black color or blackish brown color is because of the hemorrhages and necrosis. You must appreciate that uh, the blood when flows from the portal area to the central vein, periportal areas have got or zone A has got the best oxygenated supply and the central vein or zone 3 area of the lobule has got, is relatively less oxygen so they undergo hypoxia or anoxic changes very fast. What you see on the cut surface in addition is this blackish brown areas is the pale areas pale yellow areas and again the uh, yellow tan areas of unaffected uh, hepatic parenchyma. So summarize in total this appearance is a mottled appearance. This particular appearance is known as mottled appearance which is likened to nutmeg or what you call as zypher in the uh, vernacular language. Therefore it is known as nutmeg liver and the other name scientific name for this is chronic venous congestion of the liver. So chronic venous congestion of the liver or nutmeg liver. See that the cut surface of the nutmeg yeah this is another uh, slide showing similar picture mottled appearance blackish brownish area alternating with the pale yellow and uh, brownish yellow uh, pattern which is uh, likened to the 
nutmeg this is a specimen from a patient who died of biventricular failure so identify we have already identified the slice of the liver and enlist the causes and we mention one complication now cvc of the liver chronic venous congestion of the liver the chronic venous congestion of the liver occurs due to backward failuration backward failure of the blood circulation now if you consider the outflow of the blood from the liver the central veins a centrilobular veins drain into hepatic vein which drain into inferior vena cava which goes to the right atrium right ventricle thereafter they through the pulmonary trunk go to the both the lungs and then go to the left side of the heart meaning there by the left atrium anything that is obstructive leads to the backward failure so that is the pathophysiological aspect of it uh, i have explained it to understand the etiological factors okay so let us see which are the conditions in which you can get right heart failure first is the mitral stenosis that is the left atrium obstructive lesion and backward flow occurs cardiomyopathy is another example cor pulmonary means the basic lesion or pathology is in the both the lungs and which results in the cardiac complications such as uh, the conditions uh, of copd chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases so bilateral fibrosis bronchiectasis emphysema advanced these all cases may lead to the backward failure and nutmeg liver interstitial lung disease which is honeycomb disease of the lung is another important cause constrictive pericarditis may also lead to the nutmeg liver pressure on inferior vena cava when there is a tumor or lymph node in large lymph nodes pressing over the inferior vena cava they may give rise to cvc of the liver the complication of long standing uh, chronic passive venous congestion or cvc of the liver is cardiac cirrhosis so liver parenchyma eventually is damaged and uh, replaced by fibrous tissue forming pseudo lobules leading to cardiac cirrhosis important question so chronic venous congestion of the liver or not make liver yes this is the liver and this is the capsular surface and this particular area shows cut surface what you see is that the normal appearance of the liver is lost and it is replaced by nodules which are raised above the surface the nodules are of variable sizes and shapes and they are separated by the thin fibrous septae so that these on the surface they appear nodular slightly elevated above the capsular surface and on cut surface they look like this now this is very important so this is the capsular surface and the cut surface the organ is showing capsular as well as cut surface the normal architecture is replaced by nodules of various sizes and the size of the nodule is of significant uh, for the classification of this condition and that is liver cirrhosis now this is is designated as mixed nodular liver cirrhosis remember nodular size varies and if it is smaller or equal to 3 mm in size the nodules are called as micro nodules and if the size of the nodule as in this case is more than 3 mm compared to this 
3 millimeters. These are known as macronodules. But in this case, you can see micronodules as well as macronodules. So this is a mixed nodular liver cirrhosis. So the diagnosis is mixed nodular liver cirrhosis. This is another slice showing similar features of large and small nodules of the size of uh, more than 3 millimeters and smaller than 3 millimeters, smaller than 3 millimeters and larger than 3 millimeters. This is the thread, uh, original thread in the museum specimen which I could not uh, remove. Anyway, uh, diagnosis uh, with giving reasons and mention the classification. Here you have to gain, mention the general classification of uh, cirrhosis. So this is again a case of mixed cirrhosis, mixed nodular cirrhosis. Now cirrhosis is classified on the basis of morphological appearance and etiological factors. Now morphological appearance it is called as micronodular cirrhosis less than 3 mm. Macronodular uh, cirrhosis if the size is varying and both micro and macro are seen. Uh, sorry, the, um, all the nodules are showing of the size larger than 3 millimeters. So less than 3 millimeters, micronodular. All nodules showing large nodules macronodular and if there is a mixture mixed nodular cirrhosis this is the morphological classification but often times the examiners want you to enlist the etiological classification which may also be again uh, defined and uh, mention the types of cirrhosis so a classification includes a general classification so etiological classification is as follows most common cause is alcoholic liver cirrhosis everybody knows then you can remember post necrotic means post viral infection and uh, the virus is implicated is hbv hepatitis b viral disease and hepatitis c viral diseases these two are related to the formation of or leading to the cirrhosis of the liver. Hepatitis A uh, will not give rise to the cirrhosis. Then biliary uh, cirrhosis which may be primary and secondary. Primary meaning the lesion is in the intrahepatic bile duct. So the pathology in the intrahepatic bile duct is known as primary liver cirrhosis such as cholangitis of various types cholangiopathies. Then secondary is the extrahepatic biliary tract as is obstructed because of some pathologies like gallbladder stones, strictures and carcinoma of pancreas or ca carcinoma of ampullary vater. So these are the conditions of extra biliary obstructions leading to secondary biliary cirrhosis. Third one, I have divided into two, metabolic cirrhosis, iron metabolism, hemochromatosis, hemochromatosis, and copper metabolism, Wilson's disease. I would like to explain here the term hemochromatosis. Now, you must have heard hemocytrosis. Hemocytrosis means it is the accumulation of hemocytin pigment in the liver parenchymal cells, which is a reversible condition. But hemochromatosis implicates that there is an excessive deposition of iron stores in the liver parenchyma and is associated with the fibrosis. So parenchymal damage is there and leading to the fibrosis, so thereby cirrhosis. Then we have alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency and cirrhosis in non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. This is uh, uh, abbreviated as NASH, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. Long-standing cases may lead to liver cirrhosis. So, best way is to remember as 
alcoholic post necrotic you, you can list hbv hcv biliary primary secondary you can again add four five conditions metabolic iron metabolism copper metabolism alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency and cirrhosis of non alcoholic steatohepatic nash so you can uh, list about eight to ten causes of etiological classification of liver cirrhosis okay uh, right we go to the next email and that is my request to you all to subscribe to my channel on youtube you just type dr sanjay deshmukh comma pathology and you will get all the uh, videos uh, of uh, pathology uh, in a sequence you can um, make a list and view them according to your convenience and you will also get uh, future videos which i continue to upload so please uh, comment on the video like it this pattern i have adopted for museum specimens because of the uh, feedback i got in the form of comments and press the bell icon to get the future videos yes the next specimen is the slice of liver and you will appreciate that there are very fine small nodules replacing the normal parenchyma and the size is small less than 3 cm 3 mm so obviously this is micro nodular cirrhosis now it's a micro nodular liver cirrhosis what are the causes so early stage of alcoholic cirrhosis you can put alcoholic cirrhosis in all types actually early stage uh, leads Uh, is associated with a uh, micronodular uh, cirrhosis then it may be mixed and in very late stage it may also show macronodules hemochromatosis particularly shows micronodular cirrhosis and so also primary biliary cirrhosis so the causes of micronodular cirrhosis yes Now you will appreciate that this liver parenchyma is totally changed and is replaced by very large nodules. Now this is three millimeters, and look at this size is very large, predominantly large. So this is macro nodular cirrhosis, and the question uh, because it is clinical scenario best uh, CB. Any pattern, uh, we must know the clinical features, important clinical features as well. So this is macro nodular cirrhosis. The major clinical features are mainly due to the portal hypertension and dilatation of the various uh, vascular systems and toxins, liberation of the toxins. or failure of the detoxification in the liver this can be remembered from top to back um, bottom from head to toe like this you may get hepatic encephalopathy in the brain cranial cavity on the thorax you can get spider angioma which is the uh, dilated uh, veins giving a typical cutaneous lesions esophageal varices the lower end of the esophagus so uh, vessels are dilated splenomegaly is there caput medusi is the dilatation of the vascular channels mainly veins around the umbilicus ascites is abnormal collection in the abdominal cavity uh, peritoneum hemorrhoid hemorrhoids or piles and then the testicular atrophy because of the hormonal metabolism so these are the clinical features in a case of cirrhosis this is the same case uh, cut surface uh, but you are seeing from the 
posterior side and this you will appreciate is really large lesion. These are okay for the macronodules but this is large lesion. So macronodular cirrhosis important cause is hepatitis B and hepatitis C and these are the uh, lesions which are precursor for the malignancy of the liver what is known as hepatocellular carcinoma. So causes of the macronodular cirrhosis are post necrotic cirrhosis HBV, late stage of the alcoholic cirrhosis and Wilson's disease. So initially we uh, enlisted all the causes and now we are divided into micronodular and macronodular. Okay. So complication of post necrotic cirrhosis is hepatocellular carcinoma. And that is this specimen. Look at the specimen and look at the lesion. The arrow shows large lesion about 7 microns in diameter, grave height, necrotic area, tribal it looks and the borders are irregular the borders are irregular and this is extending if you observe carefully it is extending into the surrounding parenchyma like this and the adjacent liver also shows hemorrhagic or congested areas so if this is one centimeter this is about seven centimeters in diameter so diagnosis is primary hepatocellular carcinoma the slice of liver shows round to oval mass lesion measuring about 7 cm in its largest diameter. The borders are irregular and infiltrative. These are surrounded by the hemorrhagic area. So infiltrative borders, hemorrhagic area, single large lesion. Primary versus secondary you have to differentiate. The precursors lesion for the HCC are chronic viral hepatitis B and C. Another one uh, you can also include this in the causes of cirrhosis is aflatoxin B1. This is a fungal uh, fungus which grows on the ground nuts and other uh, uh, eatable uh, things like uh, wheat and other things which appear as blackish and uh, taste is also different. So if you take raw ground nuts you are likely to accumulate aflatoxin and in some cases may lead to the uh, hepatocellular carcinoma. NASH I already discussed chronic alcoholism yes it may also lead to malignancy. And of late, this is becoming more important because uh, of the pesticides and insects, insecticides which are indiscriminately uh, put on the vegetables and farms and uh, eating of that is implicated in the HCC. Another case of uh, solitary large tumor in the liver about 8 centimeters and cut surface shows blackish and necrotic areas, irregular surface. So what is your diagnosis and what is the serological marker for this diagnosis? The slice of liver shows solitary large mass about 8 by 4 centimeters, 8 by 4. Cut surface shows necrosis and patch of white pale area. Yes, here you can appreciate if you carefully observe. This is a pale white area which looks like a fatty change associated with the malnutrition associated with this HCC. Also, you can see on the capsule surface part is tense and glistening and while some part of the capsule is wrinkled. So these fine um, points if you tell it is uh, good but main thing is 
this single large mass which is HCC primary hepatocellular carcinoma the serological marker again can be mcq is alpha fetoprotein and hep par 1 so these are the tumor markers or serological markers for hcc again this is the slice of the liver and shows multiple large irregular deposits However, you can see in between these, the liver parenchyma is appearing normal. And the lesions, uh, here they are having rounded border, but here they are coils, adjacent uh, lesions have fused together, sort of. And this is the small round lesion, this is the small round lesion. So multiple round lesions and the mm, area also shows necrosis and center shows some dipping in or what is known as umbilication so this one this one so this is the case of metastatic carcinoma of the breast in classical lesion this will be very round solitary discrete now here it is coils so here you can give the diagnosis of multicentric HCC as well, but I, as I know this case, it is a case of metastasis in the liver. So various museums will have various types of the lesion, but multiple lesions with central umbilication and intervening parenchyma normal appearing indicates metastatic liver cancer metastasis of cancer elsewhere mostly it is uh, GIT GIT cancers uh, predominantly show metastatic deposits in the liver so the slice of the liver shows multiple irregular lesions with normal appearing liver parenchyma in between and the lesion shows necrotic and hemorrhagic area One more uh, interesting lesion, uh, in some of the lab, uh, museums you may encounter this. This is an incidental finding at the autopsy uh, diagnosis. The slice of liver shows brownish ill circumscribed lesion, subcapsular. This is capsule and this is subcapsular about 4 by 3 centimeters. The corresponding capsule also shows the uh, dark coloration and is wrinkled. So this is a classic case of hemangioma and these incidental hemangiomas in the liver are often times cavernous type of hemangioma. This is still a rare case now but previously it was common and in some museums this is there. So this is a liver and you see a large uh, necrotic cavitatory lesion so transverse section of the liver shows lesion measuring about 9 centimeters in diameter the wall of the this necrotic cystic lesion shows necrotic debris and in fresh specimens, there will be anchovy sauce like a material, thick uh, orange colored um, material will, paste like material will ooze out, which is akin to anchovy sauce. Anchovy is a fish, and anchovy sauce has got that particular orange like color, orange yellow color. So, previously they were calling it the anchovy sauce like material from the amoebic abscess. So capsule is pseudo capsule around the lesion. So this is the case of liver amoebic abscess. The complications include that if this lesion ruptures, then the various complications uh, may be encountered. Uh, so if it ruptures uh, superiorly, it may lead to empyema, uh, that is the pus into the pleural space or 
ಇಟ್ ಮೇ ಕಾಸ್ ಎಂಡೋಕಾರ್ಡೈಟಿಸ್ ಇಫ್ ಇಟ್ ಅಫೆಕ್ಟ್ ದ ಪೆರಿಗಾರ್ಡಿಯಲ್ ಸರ್ಫೇಸ್ ಆರ್ ಪೆರಿಟೋನೈಟಿಸ್ ಇಫ್ ಇಟ್ ಗೋಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ದ ಅಬ್ಡಮಿನಲ್ ಕ್ಯಾವಿಟಿ ಸೊ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ದ ವೇರಿಯಸ್ ಕಾಂಪ್ಲಿಕೇಶನ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಮಿಕ ಬ್ಯಾಪ್ಸಸ್ ಆನ್ ಅಕೌಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ರಪ್ಚರ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ವೆರಿ ಮಚ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ಹೋಪ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಗಿವ್ ಮೀ ದಿ ಫೀಡ್ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಕೀಪ್ ಆನ್ ವ್ಯೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಆಲ್ ಮೈ ವೀಡಿಯೋಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎನ್ರಿಚಿಂಗ್ ಯುವರ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು